Now, normally insulin binds to the receptor on the surface of the cell and causes signal transduction within the cell to alter energy in uptake and also energy metabolism within that cell. Basically, what insulin says to the cell is, I got a lot of energy out here because the blood glucose is high and I need you to take it up and get rid of it, store it, put it away for a rainy day. Insulin is your rainy day hormone. And when insulin works, when your insulin goes up, you take more energy from your bloodstream in the form of either glucose or fat, and you snarf it away into cells for storage. Insulin is the energy storage hormone. So insulin shunts energy to fat. Insulin makes fat. More insulin, more fat. Just that simple. Okay. You can take that to the bank. That's a very, that, that's everybody agrees with. Now, the problem is if your fat and your insulin's high, why is your insulin high if it's not working? Right. I mean, why is your fat, sorry, why is your fat greater? Because it's not working. So you shouldn't be laying down fat. Well, that's what happens when you get to type 2 diabetes. So you're basically your insulin's high. Energy goes to fat. Your insulin's high. Energy goes to fat. So you get bigger, bigger, bigger until one day, finally, you can't make enough insulin for as big as you've gotten. And when that day comes, now you can't shunt the sugar to fat anymore, the energy to fat. Now the sugar or the energy stays in your blood and now you have type two diabetes. So type two diabetes is sort of the end game of this process, but the process is going on way before to cause the energy storage in the first place. And I've learned in, you know, from my clinical experience and all from all the research I've done and from all the research that everyone else has done, that the only way to lose weight is to get insulin down. And that's true whether you do it with diet, and that's true whether you do it with drugs, and that's true whether you do it with surgery. Get the insulin down any way you can. That's the key to this whole story. Now, having said that, what is going on in the cell that makes it insulin resistant? Well, there we have a little bit of a question and a conundrum because there are possibly two and maybe even three different ways that this insulin resistance occurs. Now, the first way is the way that has been documented by many, many investigators. In particular, uh, you know, I'll, I'll do a shout out to Dr. Jerry Shulman at Yale University, who's done an, an unbelievable job at categorizing the metabolic pathway by which glucose can lead to insulin resistance. And basically what happens is when, you know, glucose goes to muscle, the muscle should take it up and store it as glycogen. But at a certain point, the muscle can't make any more glycogen. And <clears throat> what happens is the muscle ends up taking the extra and turning it into fat. And now you have intramyocellular lipid. And then that sends a signal back to the liver saying, those fats are a problem and they get taken up by the liver and now they cause liver insulin resistance. And when your liver's insulin resistant because of the fat, then your pancreas realizes your liver's sick and then your pancreas has to make more insulin. And now you have higher insulin levels all over the body. And then that insulin works on arteries to cause uh, uh, mus vascular smooth muscle growth, which puts you at risk for heart attack. It causes uh, various glands to grow, and that increases your risk for cancer. Okay, Ch it changes you know, blood proteins to make your uh, blood more coagulable to increase your risk for heart disease. And eventually your pancreas will burn out 